The number one thing you sell is chicky, like little Polaroid pictures. Okay, so like each chicky is like how much? Dayan, it's 1,000 yen, but I only get 300 out of those 1,000. Okay, so the agency takes 70% of yeah. your sales? They made up everything. They gave me my name. They also wanted to make up a birthday for me, a different date. Wait, why would they change your birthday? Because it was too close to other girls' birthdays. Are you serious? Yeah. How's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man and uh, today I am here with someone rather special. Someone very unique for this channel and it's a person that has a profession, a past profession, that I've always been interested about just because it is so ingrained into Japanese culture and that is the idea of idols. Now you guys know I'm not really too fond or knowledgeable about the idol world so I figured in order to learn something new and maybe kind of open up the different sides of the idol industry because it is sure something that is uh, shrouded in secrecy to say the least. I have found myself a former idol. Hello, my name is Jessica and I used to be an idol. I did it for two years. I know uh, you, you've been watching my channel for a while, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I found out you were, you were like a fan and I'm like, oh, well, maybe that makes things easier. Maybe do like a quick little introduction about yourself, I guess. Okay, so my name is Jessica. I was born in Germany and my mom is Korean and my dad is Russian. So technically I am half Korean, half Russian by blood, I guess. But my nationality is German. Russian, Korean, but you were born and raised in Germany. Yes. Damn. I feel like I can just connect to that immediately because I am also a weird mix of European and yeah. Asian as well. So we're definitely like, I feel we, we can kind of vibe. <laughs> just off that. But before we move on with the interview, a quick word from today's sponsor. The internet is most certainly a scary place. I would know. I live on the internet, basically. And because so much of my personal information is out there, I want to make sure that everything I do and everything I say is safe. And that's why I use Surfshark, the sponsor for today's video. Surfshark helps you to encrypt your internet activity so no one can track or steal your data. With its secure and fast protocols and powerful encryptions, you can take control of your data. You can also protect your identity by getting notified by Surfshark if your personal data has been leaked somewhere online. Not to mention that you can use Surfshark on unlimited amount of devices. While I'm on the road, I'm really dependent on using public Wi-Fi, but I also want to make sure that my private information isn't out there in the netherworld. And so Surfshark is perfect for those situations. Plus, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guaranteed, so you know they are confident in their services. So if you'd like to protect yourself online and have a safe, fun, internet surfing experience, then go and check out Surfshark VPN by clicking the link down in the description below. Plus, if you use my link and the QR code on screen right now, you'll get an 83% discount, three months of Surfshark for free, and the 30-day money back guarantee. So if you're interested, again, click the link down in the description below, and thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. First thing I kind of want to ask you is, um, what was your career like as an idol? You were doing it for two years, you said? Yes, two years. Okay. That's how long the contract ran. And so once the contract ended, I guess you were kind of just yes. like, see ya. Yes, right. exactly. <laughs> and uh, I guess like, what kind of idol were you? Because I know for a fact, and you can correct me on this, there are like all sorts of different types of idols oh, in yes. Japan, right? So what kind of idol were you? We were like a kind of cooler idol group. Okay. Our uniform was like all okay. long and black. Like the edgy idols? Yeah, yeah. Like, right. not really edgy, but right. um, we had like Ani Son Testo. So right, 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 our right. songs were like, I guess a little bit like like More an like anime, anime yeah, anime so soap yeah. opening stuff. But we all our songs were original though, so mm -hmm. we didn't cover anything. Yeah, I got scouted on the street. I was just walking down the street in Harajuku when this lady came up to me and was like, "Oh, excuse me, sumimasen, idol ni nani ka?" Yeah. And I was like, "Me? Me? And I don't like what? <laughs> what? I can be an idol?" And I was like so hyped up, so I immediately said yes. Wait, so, and so what? What were you doing as a job before that happened? I was a student. Oh, okay. And also, I work at a girls' bar. <laughs> Oh, right. Wow. I'm, okay. I'm, st I'm still doing that, actually. Okay. And the regular bartender as well as right. at another bar. How much did you know about, I guess, like the idol industry in Japan prior to you getting scouted? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, right? <laughs> so you kind of was just like, oh, I know what idols are. Give yeah. it a go, see how it yeah. goes, kind of thing. Like, I'll just sing and dance on stage. I I'll do that. that right. That'll be easy. And right. uh, no, it was not. That's one thing I, I've, I've always wanted to ask about that because I feel like, you know, uh, the, the general consensus of the, the idol Idol industry in Japan, especially, right? I mean, it's huge in Japan, yeah. first of all, right? Like, you know, there are idols in different countries as well, of course, but I feel, especially in Asia, like Korea with like the K pop boom, yeah. and then like in Japan, especially, it's like huge. When you're an idol in Japan, you are 
like a like a fucking celebrity. Right? I guess, but since I was doing chika idol, so I was underground idol, and I, I think everyone starts out as a chika idol, and right. then and then they go like branch out into being bigger. So explain to me what what is a chika idol? Chika idol is basically you have live concerts like maybe six times a week on the weekends at least two times. Six times. Yeah, yeah. So the weekends is like you have one concert, you finish that, and then you go to the next event and perform there again. So weekends would be like two concerts at a time. And you do that um, every week? Yeah. I had no time, like no time for myself at all. I couldn't do anything. Like, and that was like part of the contract? Yeah, that I had so many live concerts because that was mm. the only way to make money. So each event, you, you basically you perform maybe like 15 minutes. That's max you perform. Oh, that's, that's very short. That's very short. Okay, because yeah. because when I when you said concert, I imagine like you know like a rock concert where it's like an hour or an hour and a half. No, entire event usually is like three hours something. Every time slot is 15 minutes, and All there's different, different groups. groups. Oh, I so see. you perform, and then like right after the next group comes on stage right. and performs their songs. So you have 15 minutes. That's probably enough for maybe what. Four, five songs? Yeah, maybe? four songs. No, three. If we have 20 minutes, then we can do four. Wow, so, and you would do that every single week? Yeah. How much money, roughly, would you make per 15 minute show? Nothing. Zero. Wait, you made nothing? I wasn't, I wasn't popular, so I made zero. Almost all the time. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're, you're contractually forced by the agency that you sign up with. I assume yes. you're with some kind of agency. Yes. So the, the scout comes to you and was like, would you like to be an idol? You, you signed this contract for, you said two years. Yes. And on the contract, it says you have to do six shows a week, no pay. The shows itself aren't paid. But after the, the after the actual performance, there's right. the book bang. So you say like sale phase, right, I guess. Right, right. Like merch you sell, and stuff merch, like that. Yeah, you sell merch. And the number one thing you sell is chicky, like little Polaroid pictures. Right, right. So you pay one thousand yen for one Polaroid picture with your idol. Okay. So you pose together, you take the picture, yeah. and then you like have the handshake as well. Like you shake hands. But yes. due to Corona, like I never got to do that actually. Okay. So like each checky is like how much? Day in, it's one thousand yen. But I only get three hundred out of those one thousand. Damn. <laughs> the, okay. So the agency takes seventy percent of yeah. your sales. <sighs> Okay, so then when you start off, for example, right, you immediately start selling these like checkies and stuff yeah. like that, right? But because you're not really known, because you're just starting off, or yeah. let's say your group is just starting off, right? Let's say on average, when you were first starting off, how many Polaroids would you be able to sell? Like one. Like one. In, in one night. Yeah. There are nights where I'd be walking home with either zero yen or like 300. I guess because your only return would be like the, the boot bun. So you'd be selling like yeah. what? So you would sell Polaroids. What else would you sell? That's it. That's it. Okay, so let me get this straight. Average night, right? Yeah. You three would, you know, fucking practice like crazy for yes. days at a time, hours a day, I assume, yeah. right? Making sure you sound good, your, your, your choreography is on point and everything like that. You'd come on stage, you do a 15 minute show, and then afterwards you'd, you'd, you'd come out maybe take a Polaroid or two, make, what, six dollars? Yeah. And then that was the end of your night. Yeah. And you did this for two years? I did that for two years! <laughs> Holy shit! I and, did that and for I two assume, years! And I assume this is pretty much a norm in the Chikai Dora world, right? But most Chikai Dora, they also do like photo shoots, like Satsai Kai. They would go like to photo shoot meetups, I guess. But our agency was very against that. Like anything, I don't know why, but Mr. Bossman was so against anything digital, like anything digital photos. Like, cause some idols would also just sell like 10 seconds of like the fan being able to take as many pictures as, as they want. Right, right. From uh, of the idol, like with the camera and everything. But our agency was like very strict against that. And I was like, why though? Like we could make more money like this? Yeah, like, but also I think maybe there might be that like weird thing of like, oh, if it's digital, then you know, what if they just like start like selling it illegally to other people? Oh, and stuff maybe, like that? I don't know. But it's it was just weird to me. To me as a model, I was right. like, well, like we could make more money selling more yeah. pictures. And I assume taking pictures during the shows was forbidden as forbidden well, right? okay some yeah. idols allow it yeah but ours was strictly forbidden that's not even like an idol thing i feel because like i've been to enough like live concerts of like rock bands mm -hmm. i like for example in japan and for some reason you're not allowed to take photos or videos yeah during the concerts it's really weird and it's only in japan even if it's like a band that is like international you know you could go see that same band in like america or something everyone has their phones out taking yeah. photos, taking videos. But for some reason in Japan, they're really strict about it. Yeah, they are, and I don't quite know why. I don't know either. It's kind of weird. I once heard my coworker say it's something about like, 
you know, the fans trying to like kneel down and get a shot of your panties, like because oh. you're like high up on stage. Oh my god! I heard about that. You know, but... knowing knowing Japan, I would not be surprised. <laughs> the the amount of perverted, just degenerate people in this country is. I mean, is yeah. Crazy. <laughs> like. <laughs> okay, so so going on from that, actually, uh, I guess like one stereotype or stigma is that the average idol fan, especially for someone who is not an idol fan, look from the outside looking mm -hmm. in is that they're kind of creepy. Is that accurate, would you say? Mm, not really creepy, but they definitely have like, they're unique, I'd say. <laughs> I feel that's a really nice way of saying, yeah. Well, I mean, it really depends. I mean, I'm not group. saying that like all idol fans are like yeah, this. Yeah, of course, of course. But I feel more so than other like fandoms, uh, fandoms. Yeah, I guess. Mm. So the thing is, our group, since we had very, very strict rules for everything, we didn't really, have that much interaction with the fans as like probably other idols would. I didn't really get to see like any like I guess creepy side of my of mm. my fans, for example. Like the fans I have were really nice. What would but... you say? What would you say is like the average age of your fans? I assume they were like mostly guys. Like 40, 50 -ish? 40, 50 ish. Okay. And you were how old at that point? <laughs> I was uh, 22. 22. Okay. I've performed with idols on the same event where they were 10. They were 10 years old dancing and singing on stage and they're little very like like short little puffy dresses. As someone yeah. who was in that same industry, what do you feel? How do you feel about like underage, like children idols? I don't, I, I don't think they should do that to be honest. Right. But if, I guess if you want to make it big in the scene and like become like a major idol, like. Like not start, not, start like young. And actually star, then you should probably actually start young. I mean, I was also 11 when I started with modeling. So mm. I guess if you compare it that way, then again, there is a difference when you're modeling, you're not having fans, you're, you're, you're not making fans. But yeah. if you're an idol, you have to make fans. You have to talk to those people. You have to like always because be I like, Rabu Rabu, Kyun Daisuki. <laughs> yeah, because I assume as well, like these, the, the 10 year old idols are also doing like checkies and like yeah, Akshuka and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's another thing, right? It's like, uh, you know, the handshake events, right? I feel that is very significant only to the Japanese idol world. What is that like? Run run me through a standard Akshukai or handshake event. You pose with the fan, you yeah. take a picture. Okay. Like the Mr. Bossman takes a picture. Then he hands it to you. Yep. You always have to say thank you or and else he's gonna freak out at you. Yeah. You get the picture and a little card that just like is a proof that you've taken a picture so right. that you can, in the end, you can count how many Polaroids you've taken. Okay, like, okay. How much money I'll get right. in the end. I take their hand, the fan's hand, mm. like give it a good shake. Sometimes I'd like squeeze the hand. Sometimes I would even put like perfume on my hands. They 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 could be like I don't know. I've seen fans sniff their hands. So oh my god! <laughs> I've seen fans be like this, like oh my god! I just touched my idol, and I'm like okay, I'm just gonna like perfume it and, like on my hands. We would shake hands, yeah. uh, and then after like what. 30 seconds or something of like holding the hand and right. talking. I would start signing the um, little Polaroid, like okay. write the date, my like signature right. and like a little like something, um, one sentence like, thank you for coming today or right. like today was a good day, something like this and then just hand it over. Can we imitate what it would have been like? If I, <laughs> yeah, if sure. I, if, okay, because I've always, because I've, I don't have the balls to go to an actual Akshikai, so I feel like I could imitate yeah, sure. what it's like, because I've seen so much footage of this and it always looks fucking awkward. So I would be like, first of all, we, yeah. we meet, right? Like, yeah. I'd be like, oh my God, Joey, I'm so happy you oh, came. Oh my God. Just, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Oh, let's pose. Let's do a big heart. Okay. Yeah, yeah, big heart. Yay. Yeah. And, and then, then I'd be get, like, I get the picture. I put it by mine. And you're like, like yeah, thank you so much for coming today. You. Did you see my performance? How did you think it was? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was I good really today. Like it. Oh, I'm so Glad you liked it. I did you notice? I like threw a heart at you. I did this yeah, like when I, I saw you. I, I, I yeah. got it. I got it. Yeah. Oh yeah! I'm so glad you saw it. Wait, let me let me quickly write the little note I right here yeah. for Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hold on. Would they like sniff their hand in front of you? No, but they would like go away and then, like hold a yeah. cheeky and be like, and they would like sometimes tweet about it. They're like, oh my god, my cheeky actually smells like her. Like I've had people tweet it, like tweet that about me, and like they even at me, and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to be like. Uh, yeah. Uh, Alright, question: don't... Was the perfume thing on the hand that was that your idea or your boss man's idea? My idea. That's kind of big brain. Not gonna lie. They could remember yeah, me. Yeah, that's kind of big brain. And the cheeky would smell nice, yeah. and uh, you know. I mean, in your case, you quit after two years. Yes. Just because I guess you were just like 
fuck this. Yeah. Like, I don't, yes. don't want to do yes. this. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, on average, for example, all right, let's say if, if there was a Chikai or the, I mean, I don't know in the case with like the, the, the mainstream idols, all right, like the, you know, the AKBs mm -hmm. and like all those guys. But like, how long would you say on average it would take for a, a, a girl to go from humble roots to of a Chikai or all the way up to say like AKB? Like how long would they have to do that for? Infinity. There's no chance you'll make it up like the high. But then how do girls in like say AKB make it in? Is that just like from scouting or? Yeah, I guess scouting or they like apply. So it's safe to say that like Chikai Dore and the mainstream idols is just like two completely separate. Completely things. separate, oh, yeah. Okay. It's very hard to get into like right. the mainstream. I always thought it was like, like a, you know, you kind of like work your way up. Like That's what company. they make you believe. Right. That's what they make you believe. And then it's it's not it's nothing like that. So is that what they told you as well when you like applied? Yeah, they're, they're like, yeah, if you gain popularity, like you're gonna become the big star. And oh I was like, oh, yes, oh my God. That's like a scam. I know! But like, in terms of like your agency or like a, an average Chikaido agency, what is like the absolute top that you could get to? Probably like my, my, like senpai member. Right. My senpai member, she was like popular. She always had mm. fans coming to her concerts, but mm. even then, sometimes she would be only able to call like one or two people. And okay, so now my question is, right? Say for example, someone's been doing Chikaido for, I assume there's like Chikaido that have been doing this for, you know, five, ten years, right? Yeah, my senpai, for example. Okay. Does it ever get to the point where you can just, like, make this your living? Well, I guess my senpai, like, is making it a living, but... Right. She doesn't even get paid anymore by, by how many chickies she sells, but he just, right. like, Mr. Bossman pays her, like... Like a salary. A, a, a salary, yeah. But, like, I assume that's, like, a very rare case, right? Yes. Like, I assume the the, the standard chikai daughter would have to, like be doing the idle stuff at night or whenever it is that they do the yeah. shows and then during the day they would have some other like proper full-time job right most idols they have a job and you were doing that as well i assume yeah i had two jobs beside being an idol and i was a student how did you have time to do anything i, I didn't right. i lost all my friends like i couldn't connect with my friends anymore right. i wouldn't come to campus because everything was online either way so i literally lost control of my life right. I, I barely had any friends anymore i didn't know what to do with my life i was like oh my god fuck i'm i'm like i i've really fucked myself over here well yeah I, and then i could definitely see why you got mentally you know diagnosed for mental health issues yes like that would put a toll yeah. on anyone's mental health. It really, really, really did. And I was like, okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I assume like, you know, kind of going into the whole mental health side of things, like it, I assume this is not really something that is like openly discussed, right? Amongst idols or anything. It's just, no. just kind of like a, just suck it up. You know, like you're, you're an idol, all that You're an idol, nonsense, you're supposed right? to be happy. You're supposed to give those people, like your fans, all the dreams. Like you, you're, you're the one making the dreams come true for right. them, right? So no cutting, mm. which is also like literally written in the contract, like mm. you're not allowed to cut or at least not like cut like visible oh oh you mean like physical yeah yeah, yeah yeah right you can do it but only on places that are not visible i guess that was like literally written like as long as it's not seen you can do that are you serious in the backstage room like when idols are like are getting like dressed i could see them like they, they had like cuts all over like their like upper arms or like their legs or anything <sighs> It is so sad to see. And there's always at least one girl crying because something happened, I don't know. Like Because they're just like mentally just getting yeah. destroyed. Sometimes it was me crying in the back room. Like, just Jeez. Being completely stressed out. And this is just something that the the, the boss or the managers or the whatever, the agency in general, just like ignores or just expects. You gotta suck it up. Like, and, and, and I assume this is like, this isn't exactly stuff that's like, you know, completely hidden. I mean, you've, you've just told me about it. You've told, yeah. you know, the audience about it, right? Like this is, I assume this is something that is not a secret. I'm sure like your boss and like, you know, other bosses and managers know that this is something that happens in the Chikaidota world, hell, probably yeah. even in the mainstream idol world, yeah. right? And do audiences just like, say for example, people who come to your shows or people who go to Chikai Dota shows, I'm sure they're aware of it, right? Not always, but there's also the concept of like Mehera Idol. So those people would have like cuts all over their arms, like visible, and be like, if you don't come to my shows, I'm gonna cut even more. Like, I'm, I'm gonna get so sad. Please come to my shows. And that would make people like, you know, it's, it's like, it's just bad. It's, it's like manipulating it's them. Sick. It's really, really, really toxic. Right, because like people kind of, you know, fetishize 
self-harm, I guess? I guess. Wasn't there a term for it? It's like yami kawaii or something. Yeah, yeah yami kawaii, yeah, exactly. Yami kawaii, which is like sick cute. Like yeah. dark cute, Like, I guess. like yeah. mentally sick cute. Because like weirdly enough, I feel like a lot of like the kind of fetishi fetishizations that happen amongst like, you know, idols and like in the idol world. I feel a lot of it also kind of exists among anime fans as well. Because, yeah. you know, I guess like, you know, the concept of like, you know, like yandere for example in like anime characters is like uh, yeah, a yeah, lot of yeah. people like kind of fetishize that right but then when you think about it it's really fucking toxic it is yeah so like fetishize really that right and i feel like you know a lot of people kind of forgive it in the anime world because you know at the end of the day these are just characters these are fictional yeah. characters so it's like you know no one's actually harming themselves but in the idol world real people are harming themselves and real people are getting mentally Fucked. That's why most people was. quit. So like, run me through like what exactly was part of your contract. So like, you had to tweet nine times a yes. day with pictures included, perform six times a week, sometimes more. So six times a week minimum. Yes. You had to what do like you know selling like book bum like selling checky mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And how many was there like a limit on like how many like handshake events you had to do? Was that like every that day? That was or? every time after a concert. Like okay. immediately you go back to the backstage room, wipe off your sweat, whatever, yeah. put on some perfume. Check your makeup and then right. you go and have good fun and you had to do that at least six times a week right same with yeah. the shows what else was there that was like you have to do this well my social media my, my twitter yeah. every day nine times a day completely controlled then if we had uh off kite so like uh like offline meetup offline yeah meetups with the fans yeah. i would also have to send my boss three patterns of clothing like three different outfits and he would choose what what I would wear. To the offline meeting. Yes. Okay, so and how would these offline meetings work? Like what how how would a standard offline meeting work? It was the most stressful thing ever. That's like what made me actually go and see like a psychologist, like a psychiatrist right, to, right, right. to like get meds because I couldn't deal with this shit anymore. Okay. So usually we would have taco party, takoyaki party. Okay, so, okay. Taco pa. So we would make takoyaki and obviously the fans would come, like whatever, we would collect the money from them, mm. which was like at least Ichimayan. But you would only get 30%. No, we wouldn't get anything of that. We would only get the money from Cheki that, that we take during the event. So we would sit down, like we would uh, first arrive, like, we do the table, like wipe the tables, um, put on like the glass bear. No there, staff there to help you. No, it's just you three. We we, we just do it. Yeah. Okay. We did all, all of that. Put the takoyaki, like the the machine thingies, on the tables. Right. Three tables. And then Mr. Bossman would decide which girl sits with whom, like and where. And then we would start making it. And the, obviously we as the girls, since those are like our customers, I guess we were the ones having to prepare everything, pour them drinks, talk to them, and also run back to the kitchen to get like more taco or whatever if if it runs out. And my my boss would always get so angry like I would literally eat one takoyaki because I also had to eat like yeah, you know of course yeah I would eat one takoyaki and he would like call me to the kitchen and yell at me like why are you eating like why is your senpai doing everything I'm like no she's not I've been doing everything the entire fucking time it's literally the first piece of takoyaki I'm eating like my first Peace. Yeah. We were on the third round and I was doing everything and then my, my senpai member was just like, you know, entertaining everyone, talking. Yeah. And he would still freak out and yell at me and like... So he, there was clear favoritism that was happening, obviously. Oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Since I am the kohai, I have to do ev everything, all the right. work, entertain the guests, do everything, mm -hmm. um, make them the food, give them the food. Mm -hmm. And it would be always so stressful. Right. Especially when we were ending because it would always drag out and uh, since we rented the space for only a certain amount of hours mm. We had to like clean up really really fast and he would yell at us again that we're not fast enough while he was just walking around doing nothing Man, what a willy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Willy. What a Willy. Yeah. And so, how how often would you have to do those, for example? Mm, once every three months. Okay, or that's so. not too. Yeah, bad. not too bad, but still. But yeah, but it, from the sounds <sighs> of it, it just sounds like a, a girls' bar. Yeah. But you're not getting paid. I literally said that to my coworkers. Like, what's yeah. the difference between being a hostess and this? Yeah. It's just like well, the difference no is that hostesses get paid. Exactly. <laughs> and you guys and, don't. And they were like, ikata, ikata, like. Yeah. Take care of what you're saying. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, that's, that's, well, well, that's the mean, only way to say it. Like, I mean, I'm sorry if, if what I say is rude, but the, that's just the person I am. Yeah, that's the truth. Like, as that's well. the truth. Yeah. Like, we're not even getting paid to do all this shit. And how did your, like, group members find it? Like, were they kind of in the same mentality as you, or...? No, they were like, stop whining. One time, I, I, I think I was like complaining to my group mates, and I was like, oh my god, I can't do this anymore. It was on New Year's, actually, um, when I told them, like, I got this doctor's note, and he just ignored it, and mm. it literally says on there that I have to take a month off, but he just ignored it, and I was like crying and everything, and they told my boss about that, and he freaked 
he freaked the fuck out. He like called me tens of thousands of times yeah. until I picked up. He yelled at me so much that I started crying. I was at a friend's place for New Year's because right. like, you know, you want to celebrate. Yeah, of course. And I was just standing there like I literally, I just arrived at her at my friend's house. I just stood there like bawling. I was right. just like crying so hard and he was yelling and yelling and yelling like, how dare you tell the others? Mm. How dare you say this? Like that I'm the bad person and everything. But I'm like, but, but you are. Well, I mean, you know, your boss man is Willie. But yeah. from the sounds of it, your <laughs> team members were also Willie. I think I got along well with at least one of them quite well, but I was basically always told by my boss to stop being so negative and like stop making negative. Points. Well, I mean, it's easy enough for him to say when he's taking the majority of the money and he's making you basically work for free while he sits back and yeah, so gets richer. Basically, my you know? group mates, they complain about me being too negative right. and like always saying like bad things or something right. like that, I guess. But what else was there to do? And, and again, it's like, you know, it's just scary to think as well. Like, you know, okay, so you were what, you know, in your early 20s at the time, right? Yeah. It's like, it's scary to think that that I mean, it's horrible that that's happening to anyone of any age, right? Regardless. But the fact that there are kids, yeah. girls, who are as young as like 10 years old, yeah. being introduced to this, who I assume have the exact same contracts, right? Very similar. I mean, the only difference is they're probably financially, you know, more stable because, you know, they're still living yeah. at home, you know, their parents are taking care of them, right? But still, like, the fact that they're being introduced to such insane levels of mental stress at such a young age, that must just fuck them up. Probably. Really bad. Like, I can't imagine putting my, you know, 10 year old daughter into that kind of stressful situation, no, knowing fully never. well what is happening. Like, I would never dream of doing that. No. I want to know like what the mentality of these parents are. I don't know either. And like, and one more thing that was like, I, I think it's like a maybe culture shock. I don't mm. know how to call it, but like when we first saw those like 10 year old girls yeah. like in the group, my group mates were like, oh, I'm so jealous. I wish I was 10 and could perform at 10, like with 10 years old. And I'm like, and I was like, did you just like hear yourself? Like, yeah. what, what did you just say? Like, to me, it was so surreal. Like, how can you say that? How can you say that, especially after like, experiencing yeah, hell? It's, it's a little kids. They're getting over sexualized by those like very old men. Yeah. You're saying you're jealous. You want to be in their spot. Right. Because you're, I guess, old and not as popular anymore because you're too old. And by too old, I mean, she was 25. Which is like. Yes. Basically yes. a fucking child to a, probably the majority of the people who are coming to see right? these girls, right? Yeah, and also like all the makeup and like the stage outfits make you look, appear, like make you appear younger anyways. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just, I don't know. The more I hear about it, the more it's just, it's hard for me to comprehend that this is a functioning industry. Yeah. In Japan. And this has been going on for, well, I want to say at least the past 20 years, right? Like, probably, yeah. One question I want to ask, Yeah. Right, is did you have or what was, if you had any, the creepiest fan experience you had as an idol? Oh, I don't think I've had a very creepy experience. Or what actually. was what was one if you didn't? Oh, first of all, I'm glad you didn't have one. Yes. But like, what was I guess if you didn't have one personally? What was one that you heard about from like yeah. girls that you knew? So my senpai member apparently she once had a fan follow her home after a show. After a show, right. I also heard of one instance where a fan grabbed the pens like where that we used to write like to on on the cheeky. Mm. Did he grabbed the pen and like went like this to her and he's like, if this was a knife, I would have stabbed you now. What the fuck? <laughs> and she obviously started crying and he got like kicked out. But Wait, this is during like the, the handshake event? During the handshake event, he just like took a pen and went like this to her and he's like, if this was a knife, I would have stabbed you by now. What the fuck? How and this you... happened to my senpai member like from the same group. And I was, and when I heard that, I was like, oh my fucking God. Wait, and so what did her boss man do? Like he kicked him out. He was like, "Okay, that's enough. You're gonna, leave. you have to leave now." And that's he left. enough, like, <laughs> bro. You should call the police. That's like, I know, right? that's like act an actual threat. I know, I know. Yeah, he was just kicked out of the life house. That's oh that's God. all. This ideology of, oh, being an idol is, you know, is a dream job. You know, every every girl wants to be an idol someday, right? Kind of yeah, mentality of is very strongly pushed. Yeah, in Japan. you gotta work for it, and if you don't work for it, then well, you're just you're replaceable. You're replaceable. Someone, you know. someone else is gonna take your place. Someone right. who's actually like eager to work. That's terrifying to me. And I tried for two years. I tried really hard, but it, it didn't work yeah. out. Well, I guess the the other question is, how did it go when you said to the boss man, "Hey, I kind of 
don't want to do this anymore like what 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 happened when you brought that up so first of all when you quit you have to submit like an actual like letter of resignation i guess like okay. i wrote a massive text saying my main reasons were that first of all i feel like i'm replaceable mm -hmm. that no one gives a shit about me and also then my mental health mm -hmm. and then he replied with a massive like argument about the how everything i say is wrong mm -hmm. and this is not true and whatever and, and i was like which i assume was all just bullshit of course yes but in the end he was okay with it. He was like, yeah, fine, you can quit. And fine. then you just went out the door and never turned yeah, around? Yeah, I had my last life, like a, like mm. my final life concert where actually also all my friends came. I was really, really happy, like oh, friends from nice. school, yeah. yeah. And they were like cheering me on. Mm. I, my, my idol color was red, by the way. So they even bought red glow sticks like to wave at me while oh, I was nice. performing. It was yeah, really, yeah. really nice. But I guess they were cheering for a different reason. They were kind of cheering for the fact that it's like, yay, you don't have to subject yourself to the shit Exa anymore. Exactly, yeah? exactly. Right, right. <laughs> that, that's tight, that's tight. Yeah. So like, what was the reaction to the fans that, uh, from the fans that you had built up over the past, like two years that you were in? Were they like sad or were they like, oh, you know, it happens, they, you know, idols quit all the time, it's understandable. Or... I think most of them were like that. Like, oh, it's understandable, idols quit, they quit. Like, right. And even just being in the industry for one single year is already like considered a big accomplishment because no mm. one ever sticks around for this long. I did it for two years, so most fans were like, wow, like you really like, made a thing you you mm. you actually made it two years wow like right. congratulations how did it feel though when you when the general consensus was like oh well i'll just find a new or she i'll just find a new girl to to root after like did it kind of feel like oh then did you never really care about me no or? i don't think i'd thought about it that way mm. but the fans they like bought me flowers and everything for like my oh, last nice. life yeah, yeah, yeah and they like took many cheeky and everything obviously mm. because it's the last time they'll meet me but they already had their other oshi so right you don't even you you don't really have just one oshi right you have, you have like, like different multiple oshi. girls you're you have going multiple after. yeah right, so right. I, I already knew like okay, also well, i didn't care that much i was like i just want to get out of here <laughs> <laughs> i don't care uh, no, <laughs> get me totally out totally understandable totally understandable <laughs> overall you didn't really make a whole lot of money and because you're i guess like persona or your idol persona yeah. i guess or your image is just completely owned by the industry. Yeah, it is. It was... I'm not allowed to use my name anymore, like right. my idol name. First of all, they also had me be like half Japanese, pretend that I'm right. half Japanese. And even like right now, he found out my private Twitter and uh -huh. it said that I'm Korean on it. He had me delete it. So now it just, on my Twitter at the very top, it just says I have a bad case of diarrhea. Which I would argue is an amazing Twitter bio, mind you. Like, I mean, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it used to say like that I'm like, you know, half Korean, half mm. Russian, but from Germany. And right. he was like, you have to delete this. What if a fan finds you? But why would he be in control of that when you're no longer part of that agency anymore? Because in the contract, it says that after your contract runs out, two years after that, they still own your persona. So you're not allowed to destroy it. Wait, so when did you quit? I quit um, like half a year ago. Half a year so ago. So it's like really recently, actually. Oh, okay. Wow. So he basically still owns you for the next year and a half. Basically, yeah, my, my idol name and everything. Not that I want to use it or anything, right, but he right. still owns it technically. Okay, but like, I'm glad uh, you brought up about like the whole uh, Korean uh, thing because like, uh, that's another thing. Another big reason why I wanted to interview you for this video is because I feel you're in a very unique position where you were a Japanese idol, but none of you is Japanese. Nationality like, You do not none. have a single drop of Japanese blood in no. your body. How did that play out in what I assume is a predominantly Japanese run yeah. industry? I was marketed as half Japanese. So half Japanese, right. My boss said, uh, we're going to make you half Japanese instead of half Korean because no one likes Koreans. That wow. Kind of, I was like, that, just casual that racism as well. <laughs> Fucking hell. That just hurt. Yeah! I really hurt myself! Like, you, you, your nationality just straight up got denied. Yeah, because old people, they, we, we don't like Koreans, so you're you're, you're right. gonna be half Japanese. And I'm like, oh, oh my all God. right. So he made up this entire story about me always living abroad my entire life. Mm. That's why my Japanese wasn't perfect, but I'm half Japanese and like I had to, you know, tell everyone, oh, hi, I'm half Japanese, half Russian right. and everything, which absolutely wasn't Wait, so true. you were allowed to say that you were half Russian? Yes but not half Korean. No. And I guess, again, like, it, it kind of makes sense because, like, it's, like, not to, like, go deep into, like, the politics of it all, but, like, I feel especially with, like, the older generation of Japanese people, they do have that, like, real, like, xenophobic, like, tendency, but especially towards Koreans, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess because, you know, Japan has had a long history with, like, Korean and stuff like that. Even though you ask anyone our age, oh, you're Korean? 
it's totally okay. Yeah, exactly. No fucking problem at all. Yeah. If anything, a lot of people our generation love Koreans because of the whole K-pop boom. Just like the whole thing of like Korean, I guess, culture just kind of really spreading its wings out into the West and like yeah. even in Japan and stuff like that, right? But I guess it totally makes sense now because of what you said about your general, I guess, like fan age demographic being, you know, in their 40s or yes. 50s, right? Which unfortunately, a lot of people that age group are a little more sensitive to the whole Korea they thing are, still, yeah. which is just, in. if you ask me, it's totally fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah. you know. I like, mean, it is what it is. It is what it is, I guess. But like, yeah, that's just wild that they were just like, yeah, you're half Japanese now. They made up everything. They gave me my name. They also wanted to make up a birthday for me, a different date. But I got to keep my real birthday because of Wait, another girl. Wait, why would they change your birthday? Because it was too close to other girls' birthdays. So that it would like, you know, because when you have your birthday live, so that people would come. Right. But if you ha your birthday is really close to like a different member's birthday, then right. they would all come like to the first one probably and not to the second. So it was like a marketing tactic to be like, oh, well, if the birthdays are separated, then you can spend money on this one girl on their birthday and then you'd have enough time to save up money yeah, for the spend. next girl's exactly. birthday. Oh my god, that's so slimy. That's why they wanted to change my birthday, but right. I was I guess I got lucky or unlucky because I hated that it was my that they used my real birthday for right. it. Because that meant meant I had to work on my actual birthday. Oh shit. And I didn't get to like sit down and enjoy dinner with friends or anything. Yeah. But uh, another girl, she quit and her birthday was really close to mine. Since she quit, I got to keep my real birthday. But I guess that was like kind of backhanded in a sense because yeah. now your private life was just completely interlocked with exactly. your idol life. Right? I wish they would have made it like a different. I also had to appeal to them by cooking. Cooking? Cooking, yeah. I like cooking, but like, mm. it's it's... Like as a hobby, I like right. to cook. But they actually, because I, I do that, they mm. forced me to make YouTube videos and um, like share recipes, I guess. Oh, so, so that those fans would see my YouTube videos right. and like be like, oh, it's a girl who cooks, she can cook. Oh my gosh, she's the perfect wife. Wait, so hold on. Your your idol agency made you run a channel? YouTube? We have a channel like... You have a channel on YouTube? On YouTube. That but is owned by your agency? Our agency channel and right. we had to put... YouTube. And I assume none of that ad revenue goes to you guys. I don't even think we had ad revenue because it was like no one was watching it right anyways, yeah. and and how many videos would you have to make at least one video a week one video a week yeah and would you have to edit that yourself yes we have to film ourselves and edit ourselves right. and before we even film it we have to, like to submit a script to mr bossman and he has to approve of it then my question here is what the fuck does the boss man do music right so he what he he writes the music and then he schedules our live concerts. He schedules your live concerts. And then he takes the money. And then he takes all the money. And he takes the money. That's just crazy to me. Yeah. Like, uh, as, as, as someone, you know, because, like, I have full-time employees who work for me and yeah. stuff like that, right? But, like, that's kind of like if I got my editor, for example, and was just like, yeah, just like, I don't know, I'll give you clout. He, you were literally paid by clout, which doesn't pay the bills. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Like, idols are just getting paid by clout. And even then, it's like, very limited clout. And you're just like, completely overworked for it. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you survive two years? I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. I was like, very unhappy. I was crying almost every day. Because you could have left at any time, right? Technically? Ah, uh, no, I have, you have to leave a notice like, at least half a year before you go. When did the kind of reality start to hit of like, oh, this is kind of shit. Like, was it like from day one of you signing the contract? Or was it like, did you, or did you kind of have like a honeymoon period when you first started off? Yeah, honeymoon period, I guess. Honeymoon period, yeah, yeah. right. And how long did that honeymoon period last? Two, three months? You kind of were like, Every day you were like, wow, this is crazy. Like, yeah, I get oh my to God, I'm so perform nervous. on stage, I get to sing, I get to dance, I have fans, you know, like people coming to me to fucking, you know, shake my hand and take pictures with me. Yeah. This is crazy. Like, I don't, I don't care if I'm not getting paid all that much because this, this experience is amazing. And then after three months, you, were, it kind of dawned on you to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. this is kind of not fucking worth it. And then you somehow survived. 18 months after that? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think one main point was after one of those off kai mm. that we had, where I started a huge fight with Mr. Bossman afterwards. Right. Because he got mad at me for like not cooking or something, yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. it, m making my senpai member do it, which was not true. It was me doing all everything. It was just like the one single moment where he took a look is that I was eating and he judged me by that. Right, right. And I started, and then after that, he started yelling at all of us that like we did such a shitty job, mm. and how dare we make our senpai do work and everything. Then I was like, no, that's not fair. Like right. we did all the work, 
and you made everybody cry. Did you know? Did you even notice that you made my senpai member cry? Well, probably not, because at this point, I think the number one credential that you need to be an idol manager is that you just need to be like a heartless dickhead. I had a huge argument, a very like a massive fight. We're yelling at each, at mm. each other, and then at the end, he's like, "Well, you're in Japan now, so you're gonna like you have to stick to our rules, to our Japanese rules." Right. And I was like, "That's not even the issue." Yeah, it's not the issue. That's not even the issue. But basically, I left. I walked home that night instead of taking the, the train. I mm -hmm. walked home like for an hour, crying, blasting my music like on full volume. Mm. And that's like when I realized, oh wow, I really feel like shit. I can't do this anymore. So yeah. like the next day I handed in my like letter and everything and right, told right. them like, that's when I quit. That's it. Also, I wanted to quit when I graduate university. So then mm. I would have like, I, I would have enough time to find a real job. I mean, f for one, just hearing your story about it all, I'm, first of all, I'm glad you quit. Yeah. Because I don't think anyone deserves to go through that shit. <laughs> not really, no. And it's, and it's crazy that some girls put themselves into that, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I guess, like, another question I wanted to ask is, like, when it comes to chikai-doru, is it always just girls? Like, are there any guy chikai Yeah, there? they are. And do they go through the exact same shit? I don't know. I know that their rules aren't as strict because a lot of guy chikaidoru people, they also work as hosts and stuff. Right. Whereas if you're a girl chikaidoru, you're absolutely not allowed to do that. And I feel, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that as well because I guess like another weird, in my opinion, creepy stigma about especially female idols, chikaidoru or not, is like, there's this like weird obsession with purity of like oh you know she's untouched she's untainted yeah. why do you think that exists because I, I and i'm sure i'm not the only one that feels this that shit's creepy as fuck i actually don't know it's like okay because like so obviously you weren't allowed to be in a relationship no i wasn't at no. all so no like, dating nothing no, no dating, going out no going out no like any no no side jobs that involved anything that hinted at that or anything yeah. right no alcohol no alcohol no tattoos no tattoos no piercings no piercings like not even earrings right so you obviously got those done after you quit I, uh, no i got those done secretly while i was um, <laughs> still doing it and then i put like the clear things in there like clear like plastic piercings to hide it and that's, since my hair was sneaky. Sneaky as fuck. That's sick. I respect that. That's since sneaky as fuck. Since my hair was always down, Mr. Bossman never noticed. That was like your small little resistance, yeah. right? Also, I have a tattoo here, but he knew about that, so right. I always had to cover up, cover it up with makeup. No dyeing hair, like mm. no no dyed hair. They actually forced me to dye my hair black. My natural hair color is light brown. They forced me to dye it black so that I looked more Japanese. So right now, your your form right now is like uh, an idol manager's worst nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a Just big like, fuck you to, into his face. Yeah, well, like, rightfully so. Everything I wasn't allowed to do, I'm doing now. Yeah, that, I mean, f go for it, queen. Like, like fucking get live, my everything live your pierced. life. Yeah. Live your life. Get everything pierced. Dye my hair. Yeah. Get get a couple more tats. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you're good, bro. Hell yeah. I'm doing whatever the fuck I want now. Yeah, I've noticed like it's this weird obsession with like you know, uh, like the girl needs to be like a virgin or like, you yes. know, it's this idea of like, oh, she's so untainted. She's pure, pure and untouched. she would never do anything An like that. She's an angel from the heavens yes, in, yes. in disguised as a human. And it's like, I've always thought, first of all, why is that an ideology that is so persistent in the idol industry? And I thought about it and I, and I, you know, I try to look at both sides of the coin to be like, you know, maybe there's some kind of logical explanation to why that is, you know, maybe it's like a marketing thing. But it wouldn't really make sense if it's a marketing thing because, you know, people don't feel that way towards, like, singers in the West or, like, you know, yeah. rock stars, right? It's the complete opposite to, like, the rock star thing of, like, with with a rock star, it's like, oh, yeah, you're fucking all the time. You're drinking. You're doing drugs. You're, you know, you're being a, an outlaw yeah. kind of thing, right? So it's the total opposite to that. And then my conclusion that I came up with as to why that might be the case is because the fans want to get in on it. Well, yeah. Eventually. That's their it's dream, to spend a lot of money on number one Oshi and then when she quits, get together. And there are actually idols that do that. That's a very rare case though, right? I think so, yes. Yeah, because I mean... I've only the... heard of one case where that was. Right, happens. because there's like the age gap first of all, but it's yeah. like, uh, spoilers idol fans, money 
doesn't buy you love. At the end of the day, this is just a business. It is, yeah. To a lot of these idols. This is just it's like a- It's a scam to the fans too. I feel yeah. so bad for them. Yeah, so like, it's, it's just like, no one wins. The only people who win are the people who are orchestrating this whole thing and just like pulling yeah. the strings, right? Mr. It's like- Mr. Bossman. The idols are getting scammed because they've been sold on this dream of like, you're gonna live this like, life of like clout and luxury and yeah. like you know everyone's gonna love you and you get to do what you love every day and yeah, everyone worships you blah 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 and then the fans are also getting scammed because they're selling you on this idea of like hey you ever want some pussy yeah you can get it if you pay enough money yeah. for these polaroids bro like it's it's fucked on both ends i guess like my my, my final question to you is like why do you think an industry like that is still able to run? I feel especially, um, you know, we've been getting like a lot of like Netflix documentaries and stuff like that, you know, kind of exposing the, the mm -hmm. dark side of idol culture and stuff like that. And then like recently, I don't know if you've seen uh, Egretzko season three. I have, okay. I love it so much. With the, the idol arc, yes. right? First of all, what do you think, is, is that idol arc accurate? A little bit, yeah. Some we... parts I was like, oh shit. That, that hits a little too that, close that, to that home. Hits, yeah, that, that, hits, <laughs> that hits different. Like, oh, oh, right. oh God. So, and, you know, like, stuff like that. So, like, you know, we have, like, programming and, and, and entertainment factors where I feel very slowly but surely it's kind of seeping through the cracks of, like, hey, this is what the idol industry is actually like. It's fucked up. It's full of scamming. It's just really morally messed up, right? Do you think they'll ever get to a point where that just, where the floodgates will just open and it'll just be all over like Japan or like the, the world to the point where it's it's gonna be hard to ignore? Ooh, I actually don't know. I feel like since Chika Idol is still quite a close thing, mm. it's like not really out there in the open. Right. I feel like the business is probably just gonna continue running as it mm. is. So you think that as long as Chika Idol is especially are kind of like still this like very small niche. Yes. I guess. So do you reckon then there'll ever be a point where things like Chikaidoro will kind of become a little bit more mainstream, quote unquote, or like, mm. I guess, accepted by... Because, you know, I assume the majority of Chikaidoro fans are still Japanese. Do you think they'll ever get to the point where, like, say, what with, with what happened to, like, anime, where, like, it, it, you know, internationalization just kind of one day just clicks, and then now, you know, if you go anywhere in the world, there's a good chance that you'll see something anime related, mm -hmm. right? Do you think Chikaidoras or like the idol, the Japanese idol world will ever get to that point? I think it has a chance to do that. Mm. Well, maybe not exactly Chikaidoru, but the Japanese idols. I mean, I think everybody knows AKB, right? Yeah, I'd say so. I, I think, think if, like, you, if you like enough about, or you know enough about Japan. Yeah, yeah. so I think, I think it'll get popular. Mm. I mean, the same with like anime openings and stuff. I mean, everybody loves anime right now. Mm. The same, like the singers or like idol groups who, who, who do the songs, mm. I guess they get also popular internationally mm. by, by that. So I think since it's like, everything's like connected, it's mm. probably gonna... Like, it might reach out internationally. Mm. And I also know, I've heard of, um, foreign like completely like foreign idol groups like chikai group in japan not in japan but outside of japan oh really yeah i've heard there's a group in australia for example that performed there i forgot their name but i know that they exist yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and they also do the same as like we i guess right but probably less scammy i'd like to hope so. <laughs> i hope so at least i hope that, I hope that <laughs> the, these girls who are all the way over in australia aren't getting treated as shittily as the girls here yeah i hope so i really hope yeah. so perhaps there is someone who is watching this video right now who's you know at the beginning of the video was like hey i want to become an idol uh, not anymore. What would you say, as, as as someone who experienced, you know, being an idol for two years, what advice would you give to girls or guys who are ever even thinking about, like, going into an industry like this? So, it is a very hard industry. Mm. So, I would say you have to be mentally fit. If right. you already have, like, pre-existing mental issues, you won't make it. Mm. You have to be mentally completely, like, healthy and have a positive like mindset to go into it even with all the negativity yes. that is like very apparent yes right? right because otherwise it will just destroy you and then it's very hard work it's mm. not easy it's not just singing and dancing on stage and being like oh i love you all q q mm. nabu dabu mm. it's like <laughs> it's um more than that it's right. like 
daily training, it's how you space out your social media, how you what you post on social media. You have to sell your own character rather than your skills. So it's important that you're an interesting person. It's just like a lot of like, I guess, back end preparation. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter how good a singer you are. I've seen idols who are really, really bad at singing and dancing. Right. And they were way more popular than me, probably because, well, they're very good at talking. So if you ever think of getting into an industry like that, you have to sell your character. Just be an interesting person, be an entertainer. Like I feel YouTube <laughs> operates in the exact same way. You don't have to be like technically proficient or like the best videographer or anything. But if you've got the personality, you go a long way. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I know exactly how that feels, to be honest. Except the difference is, is that, you know, we get paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, that's true. Yeah, for the, for the amount of work we put in, usually we get paid sufficiently. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I guess like that's all I kind of want to ask you about. I feel like, you know, first of all, I learned a lot. It really made me realize, oh, the idol industry is a million times more fucked up than what it was led to believe. And I'm for one. I'm really happy for you that you fucking got out of there because yeah. no one deserves that, to be honest. And I can see already you're a million times happier. Yes, I am. Yeah. I really am. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really fucking happy for you, first of all. And like, I'm sorry you had to go through that. I mean, that's fucking horrible. No one, no <laughs> one deserves to go through that, even for anything. So I guess um, thank you so much for like teaching me about the idol world. It's- uh, You're welcome. It's, thank you for having me. Of course. it's. It's fucked up, y'all. It is, yeah. It's it's fucked up. Don't become an idol. Yeah, don't become an idol, man. It's a scam. It's, it's a, a scam. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do it. It's a scam. And and fuck you to the boss man that yes. that, that put Jess through this shit, man. Like you don't. The, no one deserves that, bro. Come on. I want to see him dead. Like actually, like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see him then. I want to like be the one that feels his last breath leaving his body. Like oh even now, after it's all over. All right. Well, before this turns into a lawsuit, uh, <laughs> Jess, do you want to let people know where they can find you? I am on Instagram under my name uh, Jess in Stress. That uh, perfect name. On Twitter, I think it's my gamer tag. So uh, yeah. Melly Fera underscore X three. I will leave the links uh, in the description below. Thank you very much, Jess, for thank for you and talk to me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Guys, appreciate you guys for watching. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Obviously, there was a lot to unpack in this video. So uh, yeah, feel free to uh, give your support as well. Obviously, go follow Jess's stuff as well. She, she deserves it after Thank all you. the bullshit she went through, for sure. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Down here. Bye-bye.